last but not least, hardly least, Dennis Stander, who is the reason we're all here today. He's the creator of this fabulous idea, and he's also my third and my favorite husband. <laughs> The author of the hilarious and sad novel, A Short History of a Tall Jew. And I just want to tell you a little story about Den. One of the reasons I married him is because he's so funny. But I actually have to say that what really sealed the deal was that he made notes on my page here, see, so <laughs> was that between us, we had been divorced four times. And even though my, my second husband was a man that I met while he was serving time in prison, Dennis had even worse exes than I did. He likes to say that in the Danziger family, in a 100 year history in this country, his family has celebrated 80 marriages, and three of those ended in divorce. He has two of them. <laughs> That's a little bit what this book is about, and I'd like to welcome him. And I hope he's here because I'm going to see you. I need a stand. Here's one over here. Is there one over here? Turn it on or turn it up. Turn it up. Right up to your Right up to my <laughs> I was going to ask if there were any Jewish techies, Jewish roadies in the front of Are there? Really? Like that? Okay. Closer. Closer. Okay, thank you. Right into it. Okay. Thank you. I was whispering that. I got it. Okay? Okay, Laurel, you can Cool, thank you. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate everyone kind of schlepping downtown for this really cool bookstore at this cool event. If I knew if there were this many cool Jews I was hanging out with when I was growing up, I'd still be a shill much more than I am now. <laughs> um, I'm a high school English teacher, and uh, when I went, when I finished the book, I had a thought about who I was going to dedicate the book to. And uh, I love a lot of my teachers, and I spent a lot of time with my coach. I dedicated my book to uh, my basketball coach. It says this, I played high school basketball for a chain-smoking redneck named Coach Lyle Doggett, who was from Nacogdoches, Texas. After I played one of my better games, Coach came up to me in the locker room and said, You know, Danziger, for a white boy, you're good. For a Jew, you're incredible. <laughs> Just repeating what he said. So one, one quick story, I grew up uh, in an Orthodox Jewish family in Texas in the 50s and 60s. And here's my entire life in one moment. Uh, every Friday night, we had a traditional Shabbos dinner. Uh, all the family was over for Sabbath dinner, aunts, uncles, cousins, long table. My mother cooked and baked for two days. We ate 20 minutes. No one said thank you. That was kind of traditional. Uh, <laughs> but my mother lit the candles for the meal. One of my uncles would say the blessing on the wine. I would say the blessing on the bread. And at a certain point, every Friday night for Sabbath uh, dinner, my dad, who looked and sounded just like LBJ, would turn to me and say, Bubba, fetch your Uncle Hyman another one of them matzo balls. <laughs> That's it, that was growing up Texas. Uh, I am going to read an excerpt from a short history of the tall Jew, which is uh, two love stories. It's a love story between a 39 year old divorce uh, man and Philip Lockman, who's been separated from his kids by divorce and has just gotten back, and he's reconnecting with them. And on Valentine's Day of uh, this 39th year, Philip announces to his 15 year old son, Zach, and his 14 year old daughter, Lily, that by the following Valentine's Day, when he's 40, he will have found the last great love of his life and marry her, and they will be in a somewhat normal nuclear family. So that's his plan, it doesn't work out. But the part I'm going to read is uh, July 4th weekend. Uh, about four and a half months have passed since he's. Uh, given out his plan. The only thing good's happened is his son is uh, away at communist sleepover camp in the Casper Mountains. <laughs> and his daughter is at an accounting and kayaking camp in Orange County. And he is home alone, feeling a little blue and sad and desperate, and here it is. My summer gig at UCLA, 
where I taught how to break into TV writing to middle school students, <laughs> began on July 5th. <laughs> on Independence Day, I sat home alone, dipped Doritos into guacamole, and watched 12 hours of Panops Marathon. Around midnight, I turned off the TV and turned on Zach's computer he left behind because the tent he was sleeping in all summer had no electric outlets. I logged on to J-Link. Within minutes, the screen was filled with photographs of happy Semitic couples hanging on to each other and grinning as if every day were Hanukkah. I pointed and clicked, who are we? We are one in 10 Jewish singles worldwide. We are 325,000 Americans, 25,000 Canadians, 18,000 Israelis. 115 Chileans, and two very lonely Jews in Uzbekistan. <laughs> so sign up and meet the partner of your dreams now. <laughs> I bought in. For $29.95 a month, I had unlimited access to Jewesses worldwide. Though it did bother me that the corporate offices were located in Compton. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine a bunch of Jewish guys setting up shop at the hood. <laughs> After an hour spent staring at my virtual Hasidic harem, I felt emboldened and began to fill in the blanks on my online profile. My screen name is Flash. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to call myself Flash. The nickname given to me by my seventh grade basketball coach because I was slower than the 225 pound water boy. <laughs> but I always liked it. Flash Lockman sounded like a Jewish astronaut. I'm a 39-year-old male from Houston, Texas. I live in West LA with my children. My occupation is teacher, and I earn between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year. As soon as I punched in those numbers, I realized the only women likely to respond were social workers, union organizers, and hospice nurses. <laughs> my favorite activities are ordering out and watching tall black men dunk basketballs on Sports Center. Briefly describe your appearance. When I was young, I looked like Abby Hoffman. Now I look like Barbara Bush. It's a cruel room. I hit send. Two minutes later, I checked my email and it read, Congratulations, you are J-Link member. 603,899. May our service bring you only nachas and simchas. But the non observant that means joy and happiness. I punched in my number and my profile appeared on the screen. I reread what I had written, thought about changing a few things, but since I hadn't posted my photos, I figured no one would contact me anyway. But within seconds, a message appeared. It's that uh, I received a uh, J link from number 312,920. I was excited. I clicked and read, Dear Flash, I was J-Link cruising, read your profile and howled. Let's meet for coffee. Prontissima. I had the worst day in recorded human history. So, a little about and wall. I teach a course called The Psychology of Psychology in the UCLA Graduate Film School, plus I'm in private practice. I'm a single parent who shares custody of my teenage daughter, Tilly. If you like tall, I'm 5'11", and though I think I'm slightly above average in the looks department, my friends tell me that when I enter a room, heads don't turn and snap. <laughs> Once when I wore a mini skirt, I was sued for whiplash. I hope you're as excited to meet moi as I am to meet toi. <laughs> If you are calling Watt now at 310 231 2039, operators are standing by. <laughs> or email or IM me at too tall to believe at AOL.com. Best Josie Rose. I went to the J Link website and skimmed her profile. Born in Chicago, BA Theater Studies Northwestern, PhD Psychology Stanford, earns $100,000 plus per year, owns two black labs. Leopold and Loeb. <laughs> I felt no need to read on. I knew the hour was late, though she said she'd be awake instead of calling on the I am. Philip writes, Josie, I read your email. Thanks for the kudos. I haven't felt this good since Nixon resigned. <laughs> you there? I hit send 20 seconds later, Josie wrote, You are 22 
Nut E, why are you up? <laughs> At 1.30, you silly coconut. <laughs> I wrote because I've been on jailing for about minutes, and you're my first contact. I wanted to say thanks. Josie, you want to meet for coffee? Philip, now? Josie, no, I'm simply Torah, yeah, now. <laughs> Philip, you always move this fast? Shows you have hundreds of profiles, I like yours. Let's meet, if it's right, we'll see each other again. If it's not, we'll finish our lattes and say buena noche. The caffeine addict on Pico would sell town in 15 minutes. <coughs> Philip, how will I know you? Shows you, I'll be carrying my golf clubs. <laughs> It'll be 2 a.m., there'll be no one else will be walking through the door or seeing 15. I brush my teeth. In lieu of a shower, I open an old issue of Esquire magazine to a full-page ad for an eau de cologne called One Night Stand. I ripped the sample strip out of the magazine and rubbed what had been page 56 against my wrist and neck and then walked out the door toward my coffee day.